People ask me why I hang around with gangsters, bootleggers, and killers. I tell them, for the laughs. Spoilers, there's not going to be any laughs in this movie. Who was seen at whose party last night while his wife was out of town? Stick with me, and I'll tell you. Who could possibly give a crap? I'm always asked, what's the most exciting night I've written about? The answer is easy. It was the night when this man is about to tell you the most useless, boring story you will ever hear. Get out now. Everybody comes to Hollywood. They wanna make it in the neighborhood. Come on, girls. You believe in love. In 1989, Madonna released her Like a Prayer album, the record that turned Madonna from merely ludicrously famous to beyond mortal's capacity to even fathom famous. And for the next three or four years, she would be utterly inescapable. And yet at the same time, her film career became much more decidedly minor, and she would only do supporting roles in ensemble films during that time period. And it doesn't get any more minor than the 1989 obscurity Bloodhounds of Broadway. Bloodhounds of Broadway is not the worst of Madonna's movies, but it is certainly the least of Madonna's movies. The least watched, the least known, the least successful, the least remembered. And also, honestly, maybe it is the worst. Which you wouldn't think, because this baby has a pretty solid pedigree on paper. First off, it features a whole host of fairly major actors. Matt Dillon, Rutger Hauer, Randy Quaid, uh, Neelix, and Jennifer Grey from Dirty Dancing, who would become one of Madonna's celebrity BFFs for a while. And it's based on the stories of Damon Runyon, a very popular writer from the 20s and 30s who wrote about guys, dolls, sometimes both. You know, gamblers, speakeasies, that kind of thing. Which is why all the characters in this movie have silly gangster names like Feet, The Brain, Regret, I think that's what Cameron Diaz calls Matt Dillon in real life, Lovey, because Jennifer Grey always has to play characters with demeaning names. Nobody puts baby in a corner. And then there's Madonna, who plays a showgirl named, yes, Hortense Hathaway. Or for short, Horty. Horty. You're yeah, Horty. Serious Horty. Here, Madonna, in this movie, your job will be basically to get called Horty a lot. Sign me up! Now, like I said, on paper, you'd think this movie would at least be watchable, but it's really hard to get through. Every scene lands with a flat thud, pretty much nothing about it works, and the thing is, it's kind of hard to put my finger on why. It's not something you can point and laugh at how bad it is, it's, it's just... I don't know what it is. It seems like it should be working, yet I feel nothing. I mean, let me go back in the different flavors of bad Madonna movies. No. I, I guess a tiny bit, but not really. Close, but that's not quite it. Wait, wait, I think I got it. Bingo. It's pointless. At no point did I care about anything that was happening, and I think a large part of that is because it's made from four separate short stories. These weren't written to be movies, and they certainly weren't meant to be mixed together as haphazardly as it is. You, you go back and watch multiple plot movies like Love Actually or Magnolia or Crash, and even if you don't like them, there's a rhythm to them. They're made of scenes arranged in a certain way that flow and add up to a bigger picture. Bloodhounds of Broadway, meanwhile, is spliced together in as choppy and slapdash a manner as possible. Warthogs belong in ringlings. Uh, let me try and convey what it's like watching this movie. I'm afraid the brain meets with an incident, Mindy's. He's all Meanwhile. Shit. Well, 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 Pete, my boy. This looks like the start of a Meanwhile. Winning. Meanwhile. <laughs> meanwhile. 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 But even worse is the way it introduces all the characters. It begins at Mindy's infamous restaurant, where, as luck would have it, our large cast of characters all seem to have a reservation. You could almost call it contrived. Look, there's no rhythm, because it tries to introduce all the characters at once, including a bunch who won't matter until way later, and some of whom won't matter at all. The movie never recovers from this. Who's this guy? Beats me. Does he show up later? Nope. Or, or maybe he does, I don't know. Everyone I inflicted this movie on had extreme difficulty figuring out who was who and what the hell was going on, even though the narrator tells us in excruciating detail what's happening on the screen. Feet favors one hand and blows right before he throws. You don't say. The underhand toss, a flick of the wrist, and... Yeah, I have eyes, jerk. Why do I feel condescended to? Inspector McNamara. I think I found me a date for this evening. Most of the movie seems to be relying on the time period to make it interesting. 
It's all just very stiff. Most of the acting is very stilted and phony. Lovey, don't barbecue your brains over that bow weevil. 23 skidoo, that hotsy totsy flapper's a cat's pajamas. Okay, what's it about? Ugh, Christ. Here are the plot lines, and I want you all to appreciate the multiple times I had to watch this so I could put it together. Okay, Matt Dillon wants to get back with his ex Jennifer Grey, but she won't because he's a dirty cheating gambler. Julie Haggerty gets tricked into thinking Neelix is a gangster and wants him to whack the guy who shot her parrot. This is an ex Rutger Hauer is a mob boss who gets knifed in a mob hit and finds that no one cares enough about him to give him some comfort as he's dying. And there's a murder victim and the cops are trying to find his killer. Oh yeah, by the way, Bloodhounds of Broadway is literal. There's no theater involved, it just takes place in the actual street of Broadway. And also there are actual bloodhounds. Yeah. Well now it really does look like these hapless hounds- Shut up! I, I can't deal with all these stories. Uh, let me just focus on Madonna's. The main character of that storyline is Randy Quaid, a down on his luck loser. So customers like you I don't need out. Hey! Good luck, buddy. Pete was the most notoriously honorable guy in town. Where did he suddenly get all that dough? Good question. Why is he suddenly so flush with cash? Well, uh, wait till you hear the answer. Oh, I remember that croakers pay for bodies to practice on, and I find me this doctor who wishes to buy mine. Yeah, he sold his body to science so it can be studied after he dies. And, and not like years down the line when he eventually kicks the bucket. That debt is getting called in tonight. He's going to use his money to pay off his debts, then have one last night on the town, and then he's going to let a doctor kill him. This doesn't sound legitimate. Oh, it's very legitimate. I, I know the Prohibition era was rife with murderers, gangsters, bootleggers, bank robbers. This is the first time I've heard of it having mad scientists. So he's going to go out and enjoy his last night on Earth, including buying fancy things for Hortense, partying it up. Things are going well. Maybe too well. How many feet? This may be a choice moment to start a losing streak. Let the Wookiee win. <laughs> okay, so now we have a dilemma. He was planning to kill himself, but now he's turned his money into a whole lot more money, and Hortense seems pretty receptive to his newly rich self. Life kind of seems worth living now. What's he gonna do? Just go to Old Whiskers. Give him his dough back. Of course, it's so simple. Now that I'm loaded, I can repurchase my life and have plenty of potatoes left over to keep Hortense interested. That seems reasonable. <laughs> no! That does not seem reasonable. Okay, what about Madonna? Well, it's not a huge role, but you know, it's a fairly decent sized part and she doesn't embarrass herself or anything. The thing is, though, about the character, even though we clearly watch Randy Quaid buy his way into her heart, I think the movie is trying to make Hortense out to be a gold digger with a heart of gold. I know 24-hour chapel over in Hackensack where you don't even need a blood test. Like, I, I think we're supposed to buy that she's really in love with him. You do love him, don't you? His schlubby looks, his dopey demeanor, his lifetime reputation of being broke, what's not to love? So yes, I want to clarify that this is a movie where Madonna falls in love with Randy Quaid. Madonna, Randy Quaid. Hey Madonna, in this script you get called horty a lot and you make out with Randy Quaid. I'm in! That said, I do get why Madonna signed on at least. You know, this old school golden age of showbiz stuff, that's, that's really her thing, you know? It's, it's something she's always been drawn to and done well with. And get this, she even gets a show-stopping musical number. No amount of illegal booze in the world could make this interesting. Whatever you want to say about Madonna as an actress, 
As a singer, she's one of the most dynamic stage presences to ever live. The camera loves her. She has proven that over and over again. To cast Madonna as a showgirl and give her a musical number and have her not light up the screen takes a special level of incompetence. And then, I don't know, all the storylines kind of collapse in on each other. Everything sort of climaxes at once. Oh no, she shot. Turns out they really do love each other. Let her live. And I swear, I'll never play the ponies again. C calm down, dude. I've had mosquito bites do more damage than that. Also, it turns out Jennifer Grey was the one who killed that guy. He, he had it coming, apparently. But the cops misidentify Matt Dillon as the killer instead. Oh no. And then what's this? Turns out the dead guy wasn't even dead. For the love of God, who was it then? I'm not saying. Do not wish to press charges. Ha <laughs> ha, it's almost like nothing of importance has been accomplished at all. And then, Madonna saves Randy Quaid's life, I guess? I don't know, this is stupid. And uh, everyone else, uh, they all live happily ever after. Regret and Lovey Lou, Hordy and Feet, and even Basil and Harriet are still enjoying their own little pieces of paradise. They've been living in hobo villages since the depression happened, but at least they got each other. It's, it's just a failure all around. Except for that one movie that isn't even really a movie, I recommend Bloodhounds of Broadway the least of all the movies I've watched here. It's not the worst, but it is the hardest to watch. It's a deadening experience. Madonna, however, will rebound pretty hard, and her film career can only go up from here. Because sooner or later, she always gets her man. Whose side are you on? Side I'm always on. Mine. Warren Beatty is Dick Tracy. I surrender, dear. I may seem proud.